Hey Bear fans, Coach Brown here. We're excited to be with you here on signing day, Wednesday, February 2nd. Um, one thing we always look forward to as a coaching staff is, is this is like Christmas Day to us. We get to finish and put the cap on a great recruiting season. Uh, it's an important part of, of a, of a uh, football program and, and uh, really the future of what the Bears will look like. Um, we spent a lot of time and effort on this, on this group of men that we're going to talk about and discuss today. Um, very excited. Um, we, 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 we hit some immediate needs um, with mid-year enrollees. Uh, along with signing a very quality and, uh, and star-studded high school group as well. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we've put a lot of time and effort in the weekends. I can't thank our coaching staff enough, their families, for their commitment um, to, to the process. Um, a lot of our coaches have been on the road um, throughout the months of December and January making this happen and then spending the weekends uh, with recruits and their families. So uh, the wives and girlfriends and kids and, and just you know, the support people around our staff. I just want to thank them as well. Um, but we're so excited again uh, to announce this class. Look, I feel like uh, th this is one of the better classes I've signed since being the head football coach here. It is definitely the biggest class. You know, one thing we didn't do last year was meet the standard we expected as a program. Uh, we've got some key players back, but we knew we needed to make some changes. We knew we needed to flip some part of the roster. And a big part of that is a lot of these guys we're bringing in right now. Um, as a matter of fact, we had 20 um, mid-year enrollees who are already working out with us uh, in our off-season program with Coach Fodio and his staff. Um, we're excited to announce them today, uh, along with a big group that's coming in in June when we start summer school um, leading up to the 2022 football season. So that being said, um, I can't wait to show these guys off. You'll get a chance to see some highlights of them. Uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, I know this isn't in person, and, uh, and, and look, I'm as frustrated as y'all as not being able to see your faces um, because I really enjoy the signing day party and the atmosphere and all the festivities around it. Um, but again, this is a way to get it out and let you guys know and show off the hard work that we've done and really show off these young student athletes um, that, that are going to be a part of our, our, our BEAR program over the next four or five years um, and what you guys got, have to look for. So um, that being said, um, I want to start out with uh, our first recruit. Um, and these are in no particular order. We got them in alphabetical order, but so it's not by positionally. Um, but I want to start out with, uh, with, with Austin Myers. Austin Myers is a quarterback, um, six foot four, two, uh, about 190 pound quarterback from Bologna High School uh, here in Faulkner County. Uh, one of the highest recruited quarterbacks we've ever been fortunate enough to sign. We had him in camp this summer. Um, he can make all the throws. Very athletic kid, an uh, all-state basketball player, so he's a great athlete. Uh, he's a kid that's grown up watching the Bears. That's what makes him even more intriguing uh, is the fact that, that, that he is a purple kid through and through. I mean, he knows what UCA football's about. You can see him with his athletic ability, get outside the pocket, can make every throw. Reminds me a lot of Hayden Hildebrand, who we had a few years back, very similar traits to him. Can improvise, make the un unscripted, unrhythm plays um, that you look for in a quarterback. And Austin Myers has a huge, bright future, not only as a passing quarterback, but also as an athlete, a little bit more of an athletic type quarterback than we've had in the past. Um, so we're excited to bring Austin Myers on uh, as our quarterback signee out of the high school class. Um, the next young man uh, that, that we, we're, we're going to announce is, is Chalen Piney. Chalen Piney uh, is from Anderson County High School um, in Garnett, Kansas. Uh, you know, look, he's, he's a kid that has a, has a bloodline of college football players. His brother has been a starting guard uh, for, for the University of Northern Iowa uh, the last few years. Um, we had him in camp as well and fell in love with him. He's a big kid. He's about six foot four, 300 pounds, very athletic, a basketball player. Um, understands the game, plays a physical brand of football there in Kansas. Had a lot of, lot of, lot of traffic, a lot of Mount, excuse me, Missouri Valley Conference offers. Um, again, a young man that you can see having a bright future. Really can play four spots on the offensive line. He can play the two inside guard positions as well as tackle. Um, but again, add some size, add some real physical maturity right away to to our room. Coach Boykin did a great job uh, recruiting Chalen, and uh, he's a, he's a kid that we look forward to and think his upside is is, is enormous. So we're excited to announce Chalen Piney. Uh, the next young man that we have is Chris Wolf. Chris Wolf is a wide receiver from Valdosta, uh, Georgia, with the Valdosta High School uh, there, in, there in the southern part of Georgia. Again, one of the best premier programs in the state of Georgia. 
Chris Wolf is a, is, a, is a dynamic wide receiver. Again, a slot type receiver. Uh, he's not a big kid, about 5'10", 175 pounds, but is really, really electric with the football in his hands. Again, you see the type of plays he makes on his highlights. Again, he can run a great route, but he's also a very quick twitch. He's a track star, um, has had a lot of success on the track, um, so you know he has speed. Um, they try to get him the ball in a lot of different ways there at Valdosta High. We think his upside is similar to, to, to a lot of these players is, is his, his best football is ahead of him. So we're looking forward to getting Chris Wolf over here. Coach Davis um, did a great job recruiting him out of South Georgia, and we can't wait to get Chris and his family over here to be a part of the Bears. C.J. Boskett uh, is, is a corner signee, DB signee, um, out of, out of uh, Navarro, or excuse me, yeah, Navarro uh, co College there in, uh, there in Texas. He actually is from uh, South Carolina and ended up in Texas at the junior college level. Um, led, led that league in interceptions. You don't see us able to sign kids that lead a league um, in interceptions very often at the junior college level. He's just a ball hawk. He finds the ball. He's very fast, very quick twitch. He's going to be a physical corner. He has good size to him. And look, you can see he makes plays. He's going to score touchdowns. I think he had three uh, pick sixes uh, last year during the season. Uh, he's just productive, makes tackles, uh, can guard the best receiver, can play man coverage. You can also get him in a zone coverage look. Um, he has a lot of success um, in those situations, scenarios. I just think his versatility is going to be very key. Coach Kitchens and, and our defensive staff is going to have fun with a kid that has his ability. Uh, again, he's got a track record of playing both positions, not only corner, but safety as well. Um, and so you can see uh, that his ability to play the ball is crucial. Look, like, like you, you can sign a lot of great athletes, but Again, a lot of times DBs don't, don't play the ball as good, good as what you see in CJ do here. Um, very excited about CJ. Again, he's already enrolled, he's already here, he's already working, um, and he's doing a great job to this point. We're excited about what he brings. He brings some maturity to that room instantly. So we're excited about that. The next young man is, is Clifton McDowell. Clifton McDowell uh, played at Kilgore College. Out of high school, uh, he signed with Louisiana Lafayette as a three-star prospect at quarterback. Again, you can see he's a physical kid. You know, I, I hate to put him in the same sentence as Cam Newton, but very similar body type. He's six foot four, 225 pound kid. Uh, matter of fact, in high school, he was a six foot eight high jumper at that size. Um, just unbelievable athletic and physical ability. Can really make all the throws. He's enrolled here already. Again, like, like I said with Austin Myers earlier out of the high school level, again, he adds an athletic element to the quarterback position along with the physical size to make all the throws. Uh, Coach Collins is, 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 is ecstatic about him already. We're excited to watch him continue to grow and be a part of what we're trying to do here. Excited about Clifton McDowell and, and his prospects and his future here at UCA. Cole Brown uh, is a wide receiver, big physical wide receiver from, from uh, Dallas, Georgia. Uh, again, from, from Iowa Western Community College, Coach Johnson uh, did a great job recruiting him and his family. He played for Coach Johnson at Iowa Western, our wide receiver coach, uh, before he got here. Um, Cole is an extreme athlete. He was an All-American baseball player as well in high school. But you can see, he, he understands how to catch the ball and run with it. He's about six foot three, 210 pounds. Again, he's enrolled already here in, here in school. Um, he plays a physical brand of football. He has some smooth ability, can really jump. Uh, like I said before, I mean, look, as versatile as, as, as he is at that size is rare. It's something that, that we, uh, we obviously think, think the world of, and that's why we recruited him. Coach Johnson seen him in person and has coached him day in and day out. Um, and again, just an unbelievable kid, unbelievable student. Um, already, already has made an impact instantly since being here in Conway and on campus uh, in a short amount of time. So Cole Brown and that group of receivers we brought in, he's a, gonna be a huge asset to that. Look forward to him replacing the Lawan Winningham and Tyler Hudson that we have lost um, from years past and, and, and look forward to what Cole can bring to the table. Next, next young man is a, is, a, is a young man that's also a, a Division II transfer in David Walker. David Walker is from Southern Arkansas University. Uh, David's about 6'2", 260 pounds. Uh, he led the GAC, the Great American Conference, last year from Southern Arkansas in sacks and tackles for loss. He was a first-team GAC player, made 19 starts at defensive end for Southern Arkansas University, decided to enter the transfer portal. Obviously, a player of that ability, originally being from Stuttgart, Arkansas. Uh, we kept up with him from high school, recruited him a little bit out of high school, and he's really blossomed and developed over the last couple of years uh, into the player that he's became. We, we're excited about David. Again, he brings an edge. You talk to, to coaches in that league, and they said he wrecked that league. 
Uh, he was unblockable at times uh, for the offensive tackles in that league. So David just brings such a physical mentality. He brings a maturity, being a third year player, uh, look forward to what he brings to the table, has a lot of familiarity with our program. Uh, and again, a ton of experience and obviously brings the accolades with him, being a first team all conference player and one of the best defensive linemen in that division two conference. We're excited about what David Walker brings, brings to the table. The next young man is Deorius Cobbs, also known as Buck Cobbs. Uh, you will hear me call him Buck um, from here on out. Uh, just a guy that, that, that brings a passion and energy and an edge to him uh, that not many players bring for, as, as far as a local talent goes from Jacksonville High School. Uh, plays all positions. Guys, he's played safety, he's played linebacker, he's been an edge rusher, he played quarterback, he's played running back. I mean, you look at his statistics um, up and down a, a stat sheet and he fills it up. He's the best player on the football field every Friday night he steps on it. He's about six foot two, 210 pounds right now. Um, and it, look, his upside's huge. Look, the kid's coming into college, he's enrolled early. So he graduated early, enrolled here at UCA, already here this spring working out and going to classes. He is already a sophomore in the classroom. He's way ahead of schedule. I mean, just comes from an unbelievable family. I mean, he understands the, the value of an education, but then on top of that, he's just a great athlete. You can see him right here. We, we're gonna play him at, at our outside linebacker position, but again, you can see the quarterback ability to run, scores, uh, and beat guys down the field. I mean, you look, you, you look for the best player on the field. Um, that's how you want to recruit guys at times, especially at certain positions. And, uh, you know, Buck Cobb is no different with that. He's got a great job of, of, uh, of knack for the football. He can get around the edge. He can really bend. Uh, he can do all those things. And then he's local. He's a local talent uh, that we're super excited about and think Buck's going to be a special player here wearing the purple and gray. Dylan Williams is a corner uh, signee from, from South Haven High School. Um, it, it, right there in South Haven, Mississippi, right outside of Memphis. Uh, Dylan's, a, 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 once again, a, a big physical corner. Again, size-wise, he's about six foot, 195 pounds. Uh, you know, his body type has the ability to grow into maybe even a big safety, um, but has coverability. That's what that's what you see in this. He understands how to cover um, players on 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 the uh, on the offensive side of the ball. He's a great basketball player. Again, he's a track letterman. I mean, he does all kinds of sports. Um, he's a young man that we got on early from camp. Um, back in the summer and uh, you know he committed to us had a lot of options a lot of opportunities uh, you know not only at the FBS level but at the FCS level as well um, and, and, and look coach Scott and coach Cree Trammell did a great job recruiting him and getting him engaged him and his family uh, just phenomenal people uh, but you can see again you can bring him off the edge to blitz he can cover the outside receiver he can play from the slot again like, kind of like Buck Cobb who I was talking about earlier he's just so versatile um, and when you add versatility to the mix um, that's that that that's invaluable, and so getting a kid from South Haven, that's where uh, graduate linebacker T.J. Campbell's from. We got a good pipeline from that high school. Uh, they play a good brand of football there. They win. They understand what championships look like. And Dylan Williams is going to come over here and make an instant impact as a freshman. Uh, and I look forward to that, and our staff look forward to that. Duncan Parham, uh, the, the the second, uh, is a outside linebacker signee from Norman North High School in Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, look, you want to talk about playmaking edge rusher, uh, you, you, you got to put Duncan in that sentence. And uh, what a pedigree this young man has. His dad played tight end uh, for the University of Oklahoma. Uh, you know, this kid's going to be a huge kid. He's about six foot three, 220 pounds right now. Uh, again, a, 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 a multi-sport athlete, a kid that had tons of offers. You know, he had Missouri offer early, he had Tulsa, he had North Texas, he had Ivy League offer, very smart kid, 3.97 GPA. Um, coming out of high school. I think he's made one B on his transcript, but you know, more so than that, you can see that he just plays with a relentless passion. I mean, he runs and gets around the edge of the uh, edge of the defense and really can run down and make plays. I mean, you, you just see it over and over time and time again. Uh, Duncan may be one of those kids that you look back three or four years from now and say, man, that's gonna be an NFL player because I do believe his best football is ahead of him and I do believe there's still growth in, in, in the size that he's gonna be based on his family. Unbelievable family. Look forward to getting him over uh, to Conway from Norman, Oklahoma. Forrest Corley Hooper, uh, signee from Itawamba Community College um, in, in the Mississippi Junior College system. Corley is, uh, it, it, it was the second leading tackler in the state of Mississippi. So uh, I, I mentioned earlier that C.J. Boskett in the, in the state of Texas Junior College League led him in interceptions. Well, I mean, you're talking about signing uh, the second leading tackler in, in, from the linebacker position 
uh, in the Mississippi Junior College system. Corley just has a knack for the football. You think about Luke Keekley, Brock Brian Erlacher, you know, Ray Lewis. They were always around the football, right? Uh, that's the way Corley Hooper is. I mean, he's already enrolled here. Uh, he's a big physical kid, 6'2", 225 pounds. Uh, he's a physical specimen. He understands how to get there and get there fast to the to the ball carrier. And he gets there really violently. I mean, you see, he put he is a physical, physical player, uh, not afraid of contact, which you want in your linebacker position. Has a ton of leadership qualities. Uh, he's a kid that you can build your defense around. And so a guy like Corley was going to be an invaluable prospect to us. Uh, had a lot of traffic in the recruiting world, and we were able to win in the recruiting battle. Unbelievable family as well. Um, and he's making an impact already here in Conway uh, since enrolling in January. We're excited about Corley, uh, Corley Hooper. Isaiah Broadway, um, again, is a young man that, that may be the highest recruit we've ever signed here at the University of Central Arkansas um, from, from the position of running back. Uh, again, he's from Lancaster, Texas, uh, played in the DFW area and was one of the highest recruited kids. Um, he had SEC offers, Big 12 offers. He's a high three-star prospect. He's a four-star prospect by ESPN.com. Uh, but there's a connection there. His mom is living in, in the Little Rock area. Coach Nelson Gunnell has done an unbelievable job recruiting this young man uh, for the last couple years and just staying on him, even through other bigger, bigger offers. Um, and really, in, in the end, it was about relationships. The kid believed in relationships. He believed in his opportunity. He sees the success that guys like uh, Darius Hale had as a young young freshman, like Kylan James had as a young freshman, Tristan Smith. He wants to be a part of that, and I think that's what's exciting. So, uh, you, you know, this kid right here is upside is is, is NFL caliber running back, and so uh, we're excited about him. He brings a rare rare uh, combination of size and speed. He's about six foot, two hundred pounds, uh, but but again, possesses four or five speed, and that's that's what's so exciting about Isaiah is his quickness and the ability to score touchdowns and be productive. Um, but but uh, look, Isaiah is a the type of kid you're not going to get in this recruiting world if you don't develop that relationship with them. And so we're excited about Isaiah. We're excited about his family. We're excited about them being a part of what we're doing here in Conway. Another Isaiah, Isaiah King, wide receiver from Manville, Texas, Manville High School, one of the best, best high schools in the state of Texas. Um, again, another kid that, that, that possessed early SEC and Big 12 offers as well. Uh, Isaiah King is an early enrollee, as an early graduate, similar to Buck Cobb. Uh, he's already here working out. He should be a senior in high school, and he's already here working out, graduated early. Uh, he's about six foot, 185 pounds, um, and he's, he's an inside or an outside receiver. He's got a ton of versatility. He reminds me a lot of Gerard Barnes, who's currently on our roster, just has the ability uh, with the football in his hands to really make a lot of plays. Um, he's a kid that I think uh, will we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll have a huge upside. He's one that we're going to put a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of uh, work into. Uh, you know, at an early age, I think he's going to be able to handle a lot because he's a smart kid. So I think he can play early. And again, we, again, like we said, we got to replace some quality wide receivers around here. And this is a young freshman that I believe. Uh, has an upside to 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 uh, to maybe counter that with the Lawan Winningham, with the Tyler Hudsons that we've had in the past, the Desmond Lewis's, the Desmond Smiths. I think I think when it's all said and done, a guy like Isaiah King uh, could possibly be in that same discussion. Unbelievable stats. I mean, he's a thousand yard receiver. Scored uh, scored a lot of touchdowns throughout his career. Has sweet sweet ball skills. I mean, he can track a football and make a catch. And that's, that's, what's, uh, that's what's exciting about Isaiah. He's, a, he's got a bright future. And again, like I said, he's enrolled early, so we expect big things out of him early in his career. Jay Spinesh, uh, linebacker signee out of high school. Uh, he's our high school linebacker signee from Hoxie, Arkansas, Hoxie High School. Um, led the state in tackles. I think he had 150 plus tackles, over 300 tackles in his career. Um, you know, he is also an early graduate. He's enrolled here, going to, going through full load of classes, going through spring ball, going through workouts. You can see he can run side to side. This kid is physically ready to play college football. He is just blessed. I mean, he, his body type is ready. He's about six foot, six foot one, uh, 220 pounds really looks the part. He's not a kid that we say is a developmental guy. Need to put some weight on him. He's not that guy. He is already physically ready to come in and make an impact. It's just a matter of learning learning the defense, getting used to the, to the speed of the game. Uh, and, and, and from what I've seen in the first couple weeks of Jace being here, he's gonna be ready to go. Um, I can't wait to watch him work with our new linebackers coach, Coach Raleigh Jackson. Uh, he, just, he just tickled to death about Jace and what his future looks like. Again, one of the lead tackers in the state of Arkansas over the last couple of years, and we get a chance to sign him and get him here playing Division One football in Conway. We're very excited. We're very excited about that. Jace McCoy, a defensive end from Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. 
uh, you, you know, is is one of the better defensive ends we've been able to sign from the junior college level. Jason is about six foot two, six foot three, 260 pounds. Uh, had eight sacks in the Mississippi Junior College League, which is unbelievable. You know, they're playing SEC tackles in that league. Uh, but he just possesses ability to really bend, really has a strong, strong uh, uh, bull rush move. I mean, you see that when he hits you, the tackle is going backwards. We need better pass rushing. We didn't have enough pass rushing uh, last year to really make an impact on our defense. Jason McCoy, David Walker, who I mentioned earlier from SAU, those guys will make an instant impact. They can really rush the passer. They also have the size. Jason McCoy has the size. He can play the run. He has the ability. This kid right here, you will meet this kid, shake his hand. He has the most infectious smile uh, you'll ever see. Just an unbelievable kid, really good student. Uh, you know, graduated for, with his AA there at Mississippi Gulf Coast. And, uh, you know, he was one of two players that we signed from that community college. He's one of the, one of the best junior colleges in the country. Uh, just excited about Jace. Again, he's here, he's working out, he's enrolled. Uh, he's a bear and we're excited about what he brings to the table. Jack Green, uh, an, another transfer, uh, division one transfer from the University of South Alabama. Uh, he's originally from Brandon, Mississippi. Uh, Jack Green is, is the son of a coach. He's the son of a, of a football family. He understands what we're looking for. We lost Toby Sanderson uh, to, to graduating as our center, started 40 plus football games. Jack Green adds an instant, uh, instant piece to that puzzle right there. He's, he's got experience at the Division I level. He's obviously a, obviously a big time high school center, can snap, can move, he's really athletic, obviously physically strong being in college for two years, um, but, but has the ability to come in and make, make an impact on that offensive line right away. Again, understands football, very smart kid, a business major, wants to, you know, wants to wants to get into UCA business school. I mean, he's just he's just one of those kids that you can really build an offensive line and an offense around, uh, not only because of his athletic ability and football ability, but just the type of kid and leadership he possesses. I think he has a lot of intangibles you look for uh, from a center position on the offensive line. So we're excited about Jack Green. Jack Strubing, another Jack. Uh, again, a lot, a lot of double names here. Uh, is is a bear uh, bear family lineage guy. Look, his his dad's a, a former center. Uh, Don Strubing for, for the Bears in, in, the, in the UCA Hall of Fame uh, as a center, one of the best centers that UCA's ever had. Well, Jack has a chance to be that guy too. He enrolled early, he graduated early, a kid that had Auburn, Central Florida, uh, Baylor, a lot of early big offers that just kind of fell, fell off. Uh, as the recruiting season goes on, just like it does a lot of times, but he's got a nasty streak to him. He's an athletic guy from the center position who can pull, who can knock you back, who can win board drills, uh, who just gets under your pads and drives you. I mean, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for guys to go backwards on the defensive line. And when Jack hits you, you're going backwards. That's what his dad did when he was here. Um, so we're so excited about Jack. Again, he's enrolled early already in our weight room. You know, he's in our classes. Um, you know, he should be a senior in high school and, and uh, he's jumped on board. And so we're excited about Jack and, and, and what he brings to the table, um, especially being a, you know, a part of the Bear family already, but now getting him the opportunity to wear the purple and gray, uh, just like his dad did. Jacob Cox, another Mississippi Gulf Coast product. Jacob Cox is a, a junior college center, um, you know, originally from Amory, Mississippi. Um, again, I talked about that, that program at Mississippi, Mississippi Gulf Coast, one of the best in the country. Jacob's a six foot, three and a half, uh, 300 pound center, can also play guard, uh, has a nasty streak to him, had a ton of offers. He had, he had UT Martin, he had Jackson State, he had all kinds of, all kinds of FCS level uh, programs wanting him to be a part of it. Um, and, and really, he, he chose us in the end with a great relationship with Coach Boykin. Uh, they did a great job recruiting him and, and, and his family. And uh, just an unbelievable, fan, uh, unbelievable addition to that room. Again, we've, we've got to get some, some guys to replace uh, some, of those, some of those impact offensive linemen, uh, you know, that, 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 that we lost, um, you know, with injury or, or with graduation. And Jacob Cox is one of those guys. Again, he's got, got the ability, just like those other two centers we signed, to pull from the center position. He can get around the edge. He also has the ability to knock you back. When you hit him, he's not moving. He's going to either knock you back or he's not moving. Um, and that's going to be good. And that's going to be great for competition moving forward uh, in spring ball and into, uh, into fall camp. Next young man is Jaden Robertson. So Jaden Robertson may be the best total package football player uh, we signed in this signing class. We're signing him as a, as a defensive back, uh, but knowing that he's got the ability to be in the return game, he's got the ability to play offense. He had 20 touchdowns on, on at rushing on on the on uh, at, 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 uh, on the offensive side of the ball. He led their conference there, a 6A conference or district in, in the Houston area, in interceptions. 
Uh, again, a kid that was committed in the Ivy League. He's a he's a 3.9 student. Uh, no, it's just an unbelievable, unbelievable family. Dad's the head basketball coach there at the Caney High School where he went. Uh, he's going to be about five foot ten and a half, five foot eleven, 195 pounds. Really physical athlete. Look, this kid has. We talk about having a tool belt full of tools. This kid's tool belt is full. Offense, defense, return game. Uh, we're going to utilize him in a lot of different ways. They came up uh, and visited the last weekend um, and, and trusted us in our program and what we're about. He's a 10, 700 meter uh, dash guy um, in, in, in track. Also, is on the basketball team. Uh, just a total package athlete. Uh, he's going to come up here and really, really succeed. He reminds me a lot of DeAndre Lamont, who's currently one of our all-conference DBs. Uh, very similar track, you know, high school track record that DeAndre had. I can see him being in the same sentence as DeAndre three, four, five years down the line. I can't wait to watch him develop. Javion Jones, uh, another edge inside guy on the defensive line for us from Jones Community College. Uh, and again, another instant impact guy. He's here on campus, already enrolled. Uh, he's about six foot two, 270 pounds. Um, Javion's just, just he's, he's one of those gentle giants. He's quiet, he smiles, but man, when you turn the tape on, this kid may be one of the best defensive linemen we, we've recruited in the last couple of years. He just has a knack for the football. When you talk to the coaches at Jones Community College, they had guys that signed with the SEC, with the Big 12, but all they talked about was, was, was Javion Jones and just his ability to make plays. Like a lot of times you got defensive linemen that are pluggers that can make, you know, can kind of do their job. Well, he does his job and then he sheds it and makes the play. And I think that's what we were looking for more so on this group of defensive linemen was playmakers, guys that can shed blocks, go make plays, run the ball down, and, and really be an impact guy within the game as well as doing your job. Um, so Javion's really that guy. I can't wait to continue to work with him. He's already here with Coach Davis in our defensive line and getting better every single day. John David White, uh, again, a more, one of the best receivers to ever play high school football in the state of Arkansas. Uh, he's a transfer from the University of Arkansas. John Davis is about 5'11", 200 pounds. Uh, <laughs> look, one of the hardest working kids you'll ever meet. Uh, we recruited him out of high school, um, offered him out of high school, and just didn't work out. Decided to take his opportunity to Arkansas. It didn't work out the way he wanted to. Was wanting to play a little more, but at, from Pulaski Academy, uh, he still holds single season records and touchdowns and receptions, um, and, and, and really all the receiving categories you look for. Um, JD White is 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 a program guy. Not only is he a great athlete and a great player, but he has all the intangibles you look for in leadership. Uh, he has all the intangibles you look for um, in the wide receiver room. He can beat man coverage. I think that's the most important thing, especially if you're a slot type receiver, like we anticipate JD being. He can beat man coverage. He can get off press coverage. He can really get, get, get loose um, and make you miss. And so we're excited about getting JD back after recruiting him out of high school um, from the University of Arkansas. We feel like he's going to have a great, great end to his college career here at Central Arkansas. Manny Smith, wide receiver from Conway, Arkansas. Again, everybody knows Manny, right? Manny is a uh, is a lightning bolt. Um, Manny's not a big kid. Again, probably why he was overlooked and, uh, and, and really under-recruited in my opinion, uh, but really one of the best receivers um, in the state of Arkansas the last couple of years. And and uh, we've had Manny in camp the last, you know, since he was a sophomore in high school. And we saw enough with his speed, with the way he carries the ball. I mean, he can return, he can run the football from the backfield, you can throw him the ball, he runs great routes. Uh, look, you people in Conway and the, and the surrounding area, y'all know what Manny Smith is, and he is a touchdown waiting to happen every time he touches the ball. I can't wait to take Conway Blue and turn him into, into UCA Purple, um, and, and you're going to see an electric player. Uh, I, I, I see him very similar to Isaiah Jackson, Magic, who was, a, who was a Conway kid that came to UCA and still, I think, is the all-time lead and return guy uh, in the history of the program. Manny Smith is that type player. Um, and look, not a better kid in the world. Huge smile. Uh, loves the game of football. He's been as good as any of us, of us coaches uh, since he's committed to recruiting other student athletes. Look, our best recruiters sometimes are, are, are their peers, and, and Manny's no exception. He did a great job of that for us. Um, and look, you know, I, I get no more joy than keeping a local talent in this, in this, uh, in this uh, county, in this city, um, and really in this state. There's nothing that gives me more joy than keeping local talent home. And uh, Manny's a great example of that. So big thanks for Manny. Look forward to him wearing purple and gray, and, and that's been a long time coming. 
Mark Welch, another in-state product from Camden Fairview uh, High School. Uh, they call him Big Country. Okay, Mark Welch is a, is is a nasty offensive lineman. He, he's a uh, he's a big kid that's been committed to us since before his senior year. He finishes blocks. You just you'll see on his highlights like you're going to go backwards and you're going to end up on your back more times than not when Mark gets a hold of you. He's a three-star recruit, one of the top offensive linemen recruits in the state of Arkansas, uh, really in the South region. Um, again, had a lot of heavy traffic early. Had an offer from Kansas, offer from Middle Tennessee, offer from Missouri State, um, and and ultimately went with us. The Bears, and, and we're happy to have that. We see him as a as an inside offensive lineman. He's playing tackle for Camden Fairview, uh, but we anticipate Mark being an inside guy for us. He's about six two, six two and a half, six three range, uh, about three hundred pounds. And look, his best football is ahead of him. This kid is a, a relentless worker. Comes from an unbelievable family. Um, but again, that program at Camden Fairview understands winning, um, and that's what he does, and that's what we look forward to getting getting Mark here to do. So we're excited about Mark. Namdi Adim Madumir, yes, I said that right, uh, is a transfer from the University of Minnesota, originally from the Fort Worth, Texas area. Uh, Nam Namdi is, is one of the most physically gifted kids you'll ever see. He's about six foot four, 230 pounds. Uh, yes, that's a wide receiver, yeah, and, and that's what a wide receiver at, at the Division One FBS level looks like this day and age. Uh, just didn't have it going at Minnesota, was looking to get closer to home. Uh, he got hit the transfer portal, had offers from all over the country, um, you know, coming out of the University of Minnesota. And we obviously, uh, Coach Johnson and Coach Collins did a great job uh, with prior relationships, getting him on board. We see big things with him. He is a fast specimen. Like, he literally, hit for his size, is one of the fastest guys I've seen. He's got quick twitch movements, can really run with the football in his hands. You're seeing high school highlights right here uh, from the Fort Worth area uh, when he was in high school. He's just bigger and stronger than most kids he goes against. And, and, and that's going to be no different here at UCA. He, we have an immediate needed receiver. A guy like Nandi can come in and make that instant impact right away. This receiving class we brought in transfer-wise with Namdi, uh, I mentioned Cole Brown earlier, I'll, I'll introduce Tristan Oliver later, is, is some of the phys most physically gifted kids I've ever been around, and I'm excited about Namdi being a huge part of that. Noah Mitchell, uh, uh, linebacker transfer from Pearl River Community College, originally signed with the University of Texas San Antonio. Uh, Noah is, is, again, similar to Corley Hooper, six foot two, 220 pounds, high tackle guy, 90 plus tackles uh, in the season. Uh, coming, off of, coming off of a knee injury that kind of slowed down his recruiting a little bit, which probably gave us the opportunity to get in on him and not, him not go to a bigger school. But again, just has a knack for the football. You put those two, Corley and Noah, in the middle of that defense and you're gonna see tackles. You're gonna see a lot of tackles happen. Again, he's got the ability to catch the ball, extreme athlete for his size. Uh, unbelievable, again, I say this about a lot of these guys, but it comes from an unbelievable family, very supportive. Uh, and, and again, Noah has those intangibles. He's already enrolled here. You can see him in the weight room, the way he interacts with other players. He's going to be a guy that, that could wear a C across his chest on the, on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, he's just a captain top intangible. So uh, can really run side to side. That's what you're looking for in this day and age, playing spread offenses, but also gets there with a physical mentality. Again. You want speed, but you want somebody that's going to get there and they're going to hit and they're not afraid to hit, and that's Noah Mitchell, and I can't wait to watch him continue to do that here. Samuel Horton, again, young defensive end that we uh, we were able to sign uh, sign this this, this, this Wednesday uh, out of out of Gadsden High School in, in, in Alabama. Again, Alabama's been a great place for us. Uh, we've we've signed a lot of great players from the state of Alabama. Well, Sam's not going to be any different. We won a big recruiting battle for Sam. Sam was committed for a long time to an Ohio or to a, to another A Sun Conference school. Um, and, and look, you see it. I mean, he's got pass rushing ability. This kid had. Uh, you know, 15 plus career sacks um, at the high school level. He understands how to get around the edge. He's been coached really, really well. Uh, Coach Davis does a great job with young defensive linemen. This was his number one target back in the summer and we finished the deal on him. You usually don't do that a lot of times. You get your number one guy uh, when you start out. Usually that changes three or four times. Well, Sam was consistently the number one guy. He actually was committed to another school and we were able to get him in the end. Um, and we're excited about the future of Sam Horton. He's going to be a special player here wearing purple. Stephon McGlon, again, another defensive lineman, uh, a, a playmaking defensive lineman. He's originally from Tupelo, Mississippi. Funny story about Steph, he is a former high school three-star quarterback. Yeah, that's right. Now he stands about 6'3 and a half, 6'4, 290 pounds. 
<laughs> so he was a high school quarterback uh, that was a he pretty heavily recruited at South Alabama offer, had Troy at several uh, Sunbelt schools, decided to go to Northeast Community College uh, there in the Mississippi Junior College system uh, to play defensive line and, and, and has turned into one of the best defensive linemen in the Mississippi system. Uh, so we're excited about him. That tells me that his best football is ahead of him. He's a playmaker. He's an athlete. You know that from his, from his, from his background of playing quarterback. You can see he's going to shed blocks. He's going to make the tackle uh, because of that ability. Again, he, he is still young in his, in his defensive line uh, progression. He's got a lot to work on. But look, a kid that size with that ability and that athleticism, uh, Coach Davis is going to have fun with him. He's going to fit either at nose or at our four-eye position inside, um, and he's going to be instantly a physical presence uh, on our defensive front. We're excited about Steph. T.D. Williams, safety from Hines Community College. Uh, it, it, look, TD, we needed a physical safety to bring into this group. Uh, we were able to bring two of them, TD being one of them. He's already enrolled in school here. Um, TD was, was one of the leading tacklers for Heinz Community College, also had uh, several interceptions. But you can see he plays with a physical brand of mentality. If you play safety in our defense, you have to make tackles. Uh, and we, we utilize our safeties in the run fits. Uh, we also, again, because of that, you got to be able to cover. So. Recruiting safety is maybe the hardest position to recruit, and TD gives us that opportunity. He has the ability and has played corner in the past, um, but on top of that, he is, he is, uh, he's got the ability to go make tackles. I mean, you can see in his clips, you see corner clips, you see him playing in the box as a safety. Uh, he is a physical presence. He's about six foot one, 195 pounds. Uh, he's in our weight room every day. He's one of the physical specimens when you walk in that weight room. He looks the part. You're gonna see him uh, see him wearing purple and you're gonna say, man, that looks like a big time safety. Uh, can't wait to watch TD grow with what Coach Scott does back there and how he's going to tutor him and, and, and build on his skills uh, that really he already possesses as a player. Like I said, again, it's hard to find safeties that can cover and are willing tacklers, and uh, TD is that guy. Trey Green, our other safety signee, uh, is the same way. He made five starts this year for Arkansas State. He is a transfer originally from Ashdown, Arkansas. He was a three-star recruit. Um, again, had 30-something tackles for Arkansas State, had an interception. Uh, again, making five starts in the Sun Belt Conference. Uh, physical, physical player. Again, you can see he's going to come down and he's going to tackle you. He's not afraid to, uh, to man you up. He's not afraid to, 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 to go up against tight ends and some of those bigger receivers that you'll see in our league. Uh, again, he, he was also a big time offensive player out of high school, so he's a very good athlete. Uh, one, once again, and I'm saying this a lot, but just a great kid. Look, he's got an unbelievable smile. He has the intangibles you're looking for. He's made an instant impact in our weight room and our weight room program to this point. Uh, Trey Green's one of those guys you can see coming in being a, being, a, being a starter right when he gets here. So we're excited to see him come in and compete, especially being an in-state guy and an Arkansas State transfer. Travell Anderson, again, our second running back signee in this class, along with Isaiah Broadway. Again, another very, very highly recruited kid. Uh, had offer from Arkansas State, Liberty, North Texas, uh, Memphis. I mean, he had some big time stuff and, and really at the end of the day, it was about his relationship uh, with our offensive staff. Coach Gannell doing a great job with him. He is from Osceola, Arkansas. Played played his first two years of sophomore and junior year at, at uh, excuse me, Gosnell High School. Um, again, a 10, 800 guy, but he's also six foot, 200 pounds. Again, a big kid that can really run. Um, and, and so you put that rare rare combination of size and speed along with uh, along with the vision that a kid like Travell Anderson has. And, and look, you're getting something special. So we've got a lot of running backs. We've got some great ones on the roster. I just told you about Isaiah Broadway, Travell Anderson. Look, we'll probably play, you know, we've, we've got to be creative as coaches. We have to get these guys the football because they have unbelievable ability to score touchdowns and make your team better. So you could see more two tailback sets um, on offense, uh, maybe maybe utilizing them inside and outside and doing some different things with them. But a guy like Travell, to keep him in the state, to let him play Division One football here uh, at UCA with some of the opportunities he had to go elsewhere uh, is obviously a big get for us. We're excited about him, we're excited about his family, um, and we're excited about the relationship we, we've been able to build with Travell. Tristan, Tristan Edwards, um, again, another wide receiver. Again, I, I've talked about several wide receivers. He is from uh, originally from uh, Red Oak High School um, in Red Oak, Texas. Again, a young man that that is is going to uh, going to be a developmental guy. Uh, about six foot tall. Um, he we had him in camp. Um, one of those kids that that uh, really showed out at camp was the best receiver in our camp circuit. Um, he's coming off of a knee injury. Didn't have much of a senior year because of that. 
Um, but again, committed to us early. We saw him in camp and saw his ability. Um, has has great ball skills. Really, really does a great job running routes. Um, and, 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 and one of those kids that I think uh, has a extremely, extremely high upside um, when you look at what he could be down, down the road, three, four years down the line. Uh, so, so look, a kid like this and the, uh, the, the success that we've had uh, with receiver play from the state of Texas, um, we know what we're getting when we get a kid like this. Um, and we think that he's gonna come in, he's gonna be a part, in, be integrated into our offense. And, uh, and and really really put 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 us in a in a good position with having a good young core group of receivers um, that that can that can make us better. So we're excited uh, excited about Tristan Edwards. Tristan Oliver, transfer wide receiver from the University of Colorado. Um, you can see right here. This is this is high school highlights. Uh, again, I was talking about earlier just the physical ability. He's about six foot four, two hundred twenty five pounds. Uh, has safety background. Played defense uh, at the University of or Iowa Western and at University of Colorado as well as playing wide receiver. We're taking him as a wide receiver. Has a prior relationship with Coach Johnson, our wide receiver coach from Iowa Western. Um, look, he was the number one safety recruit in the country a year ago. Uh, going to the University of Colorado just didn't work out there. Um, you know, wants to be in the, on the offensive side, of the offensive side of the ball. You can see from his highlights, has huge, huge playmaking ability. Very fast, very strong. Physically, physically built the way you want a big time wide receiver to look. Um, and again, infectious, infectious personality. Always a smile on his face. Uh, always put, put, putting hard work in. I've seen him up here already enrolled, getting extra work in on the weekends. You know, he's, he's trying to bring guys in, uh, just doing all the little things that you want your top guys to do. I think that's important I mean, for me as a coach to get a guy that's brand new to the program and he comes in doing that stuff right away. That's a big deal to me. You can see he runs great routes. I mean, he gets in and out of his break for a big guy. Um, that, that's something that I can't coach. That's either you have the ability to do that. Um, or you don't, and he's obviously got that ability, and that's that's something that uh, that's something that we're going to build on. I think a kid like this also going to be a great special teams player. He's one that can that can really be go be a gunner on 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 punt. He can play punt, kick return. He can do a lot of different things because of his defensive background, along with the ability to carry the football like he does does from the wide receiver position. Um, again, a big time Division One Pac-12 transfer. Um, and that's something we're, we're kind of getting into in this, in this world we're in now. Tyler Siddons is our tight end signee from Salem High School here in the state of Arkansas. Again, six foot four, about 240 pounds right now, basketball player, so he's lost a little weight, um, but a big time, big time heavy recruit. Uh, you can see he can make the 50-50 ball catches. He's a physical player on the, from the point of attack. He was also a great defensive player as well. I mean, had, had a lot of sacks from the defensive end position, but again, just physically a lot stronger than a lot of the players he plays. Um, had, had, had two lane, hot and heavy on him, had Middle Tennessee hot and heavy on him. Uh, we won a big time recruiting battle. Coach Hollinsworth did a great job recruiting him um, from, from uh, you know, not only within the state, but also, also from coaching that position. Um, and look, look, a guy like Tyler Siddons, his upside is enormous. This kid, uh, one, he's going to be a big kid, but two, uh, just his best football is yet to be played. Um, you know, he's a kid that, that, that understands the, the history, understands the culture that the University of Central Arkansas football program brings from being an in-state kid. And he wanted to be a part of it. Bottom line, him and his family uh, wanted to be a part of it. He had some bigger offers and some bigger opportunities, but but look, we needed a good young tight end uh, that we could really put put in our program and say, hey, that's the guy for the future. And we feel like uh, Tyler Siddons is that guy. Will Diggins, uh, offensive lineman from Bryant High School. Uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, Sam Horton was Coach Davis's number one uh, defensive end from the start. Well, Will Diggins was Coach Boykin's number one offensive lineman. Uh, from the start, uh, you know, back in the summer, and we we're, 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 we brought it home. So, Will Diggins had a ton of big stuff early. Memphis, Baylor, Arkansas State, uh, you know, I could go Middle Tennessee, Kansas, and and ultimately we won the we won the battle. And, and so Will's about six foot three and a half, somewhere in that range, three hundred five pounds. Uh, he plays played basketball. He's done track. Um, he's just he's just a great player. Had him in camp. Uh, unbelievable athlete. He will be a tackle for us. Uh, could play all five positions, but he will be a tackle for us. He's won three straight state championships at the 7A level at Bryant, so he understands winning. He understands culture. He's been a you know a 35-plus game starter at the high school level. He's going to finish you. He can block you in the pass pro. He can run block. 
Uh, he can get out on the edge and pull. Um, he's exactly what you're looking for in a great young offensive lineman prospect. Again, great family uh, from right down the road, about 45 minutes from here. Uh, can't wait to get Will Diggins here and, and, and put him to work. Will McElvain, again, quarterback transfer from the University of Northern Iowa. Very excited about Will. Again, I talked about athletic quarterbacks. Will is that guy. Will, Will was a, a freshman All-American at the University of Northern Iowa in 2019. Uh, he was a Hero Sports All-American. He was a Missouri Valley Freshman of the Year, uh, preseason uh, 2020 preseason Missouri Valley Conference uh, Quarterback of the Year. Um, just makes plays. Unbelievable arm. He's already enrolled here. Um, just, just, a, just a, a kid that can, you know, he's got like Johnny football ability, Johnny Manziel. That's what you see in this kid. I mean, he, he's, he's got leadership qualities. He's got the ability to make all the throws. He can move. He can run. Look, he's thrown for over 4,000 yards in the Missouri Valley Conference, which is the best conference at the FCS level. He's rushed for touchdowns. He's just a, he's just a great player. He's going to come in and compete for the starting job right away with Tyler G and Clifton McDowell and 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 uh, you know you. you, you Got Austin Myers coming, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, we've got to replace Braylon Smith, threw for over 9,000 yards, and, and Will's a guy that's going to come in and have a chance to do that right away. He's a big time dude. Can't wait to get him here. Uh, Zach Coxenauer, uh, offensive tackle uh, from the state of Minnesota, of all places, Farmington High School um, in Farmington, Minnesota. A uh, kid that we we had up this past summer, really fell in love with, we love with him. He's about six foot five, almost six foot six. 300 pounds, big time basketball player, all district basketball player, um, but a kid that, that was committed uh, to, to some Missouri Valley school for a long time, had a lot of Missouri Valley offers, had some had a walk-on opportunity in Minnesota, had Northern Illinois, um, and, and you know has some family, some grandparents down in this area, and that was kind of our kind of our ace in the hole. Look, that you don't you don't just fall fall on kids like this. This kid's a great player. He's a big kid. They don't create them too many too often like this. Uh, and he's he's someone that, that Coach Boykin, obviously a lot like Will Diggins, we had we had him pinpointed early on in the summer, kept up with him throughout his senior year, and really you know it, it worked out in the end. And so he's going to bring a, bring a physical presence to that room that, that I'm excited about, and obviously Coach Boykin's excited about uh, that'll help us hopefully take us to the next level. Uh, that's our group. You know um, we signed all positions really, other than specialist. Um, you know, several in, 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 in certain spots. And um, it's a big class. Again, like I said in the beginning, this is one of the biggest classes that I've signed, uh, that our coaches have signed. Again, I, I can't thank them enough um, for the time and effort, not just our full-time coaches, but our graduate assistant coaches, our student assistant coaches, uh, our strength staff, our academic staff, our training staff, equipment staff. I mean, everybody that was involved in this process deserves a huge thank you. Um, because this is going to be a special class. This is going to be a class that turns our roster over and, and hopefully pushes us forward into this new A-Sun era uh, that we're playing here here at, at UCA. So, you know, from my perspective as the head coach and obviously as an alum of this program, uh, we're in a great state right now. These are some good kids, some good families, some great students. I mean, if you look at some of their student accolades, uh, they're really good in the classroom. Um, but then you you know what what the cherry on top of the of the of the of the ice cream is is really uh, their ability on and off the field. I mean they're just good people and good players. So we're excited to announce announce this class. Um, there will be you know we'll have a, a formal uh, a formal uh, release with with all their information on it. You guys take a look at it. I can't wait to get back in person. Um, we're going to announce spring ball dates coming up soon. Uh, we want you guys to come out and be a part of it, watch our guys. Like I said, we've got 20 new faces out here this, this spring. Uh, so there's gonna be some new numbers, some new faces you'll have to learn, but that's exciting. Um, and we're looking forward to that. Um, so keep an eye out on the website and, and just social media accounts for, for updates. But with that being said, that's our, that's our, that's our squad and, and uh, a lot of hard work and effort putting into these guys. Uh, looking forward to seeing them wearing purple here in Conway, Arkansas. Bear calls up.